Yun na po. Okay, yun. So, there you go. So, good evening again, Josh. And uh, welcome to another session of Analytical Chemistry. This time, we'll be having Chapter 3, no? Chemical Equilibrium. So, last night, we ended up with what topic, Josh? Ano yun? Uh, ako yung equilibrium po. Okay, ako yung equilibrium is specifically what? Specifically, ano po? <laughs> ano po? Anong concept? Yung mga substances mo, we tackled about what? Ah, yung uh, wait. yung aqueous solutions, uh, mm -hmm. solubility rules, yes, acid mm -hmm. base. Yun, yun na. So, we ended up with that one, acids Acid and bases. Theory po. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so far, we discussed uh, two theories, no? What are those? You recall? Ano yung two theories na na-discuss na natin so far? Uh, Arrhenius, Branson, Lowe. And? Okay, good. So, but as a review, no? A uh, quick review for last night. Uh, we discussed about this, uh, the acid base. We already started with aqueous equilibrium, but we're not yet dealing with chemical equilibrium per se, but we started with acid base <coughs> description first. So this will be your physical properties no, the acids and bases. Uh, we're done with this one. And then this will be the theories or definition of acids and bases. Chemical definition this time, because um, what we want is to describe acids and bases na uh, base sa chemistry nila, no? So, we have the first one is uh, Sis Van de Arrhenius, no? So, he offered the definition. Ano yung acids? Yeah, yung for, for this time, other than ammonia, siguro. Very pretty ah. good, ano po? Pretty good theory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Arrhenius definition is a pretty good one because uh, uh, Arrhenius just left out yung mga ammonia compounds. So, amine, tsaka ammonia. Actually, meron pa siyang nakalimutan nyo siya. Yung mga uh, metals mo. Transition metals. Nakalimutan niya rin yun. Okay? So, uh, ano yung mga transition metals? Naaral na natin yun. Eh. Acid or bases? Mm, acid. Mm -mm. Di ba? Kasi dun sa ano natin, sa coordination chem, there are what? Anong type ng acids? Uh... Hmm. Anong type ng acid yan? Kahit hindi pa natin nadidiscuss yung third theory, dapat alam mo na yan. Alam ko na po, eh, wait lang. Uh, alam ko na po, eh. <laughs> yan yung third definition. Yes. Uh, Branson Lowry ba siya? No, they are not Branson Lowry acids. Uh, yung isa pa. They are what? Yun kasi yung na-left out din ni Arrhenius eh yung mga transition metals. So, si Arrhenius, ang na-left out niya sa bases, correct, Lewis acids. Uh, si Arrhenius, ang na-left out niya sa bases, si amines and yung ammonia compound. No? So, amo amine compounds, saka si ammonia. Yun yung na-left out niya sa bases. Kaya nag-offer ng another definition si Bronze and Lowry. However, si Arrhenius, naiwan niya naman sa acids, yung mga transition metals. That's the reason why he um, proposed another theory or someone proposed another theory to cover the transition metals. The, um, usually, transition metals, uh, that will be your Lewis uh, acid-based definition. But however, as a review muna, uh, ang arrangements, no? Uh, Pag-acid, Josh, ano yung i-yield nila sa water? Uh... If you place them in water... H plus pag acid, tapos yung OH minus pag base. Very good. Or proton, no? So, or HTO plus. Pag acids, ano yung may kita mo sa formula nila? They have? They have H in their, ano? In their formula. Pero please take note, ha? Tignan mo to, Josha. Tignan mo yung sa slide natin. Acidic H yung nilalagay ko, saka basic OH. Kasi minsan, let's say, sa acetic acid, CH3, COOH. Sino lang yung acidic dyan? Sino lang yung acidic? Sino lang yung acidic, Josh? Uh... No, CH3COOH. Your acetic acid. 
sa ano po sa Arenis ba? Eh, Arenis definition. Uh, di ba ang nakalagay kasi diyan? Kaya ni kaya hinahilight ko yung uh, mga acids mo they have acidic hydrogen in their formula let's say you have CH3COH yes ano has acidic uh, oo oh, asan yung acidic hydrogen niya diyan sa huli po okay eto no so apparently si acetic acid hindi siya ganun kung follow nga sa formula eh. kasi usually sa yung mga acidic hydrogen mo they are written in what usually in front no sa so, formula nila However, for your acetic acid, it's written doon sa uh, medyo dulo no, na part ng kanyang formula. So, ayan. And then, yung OH mo naman, you have basic OH uh, for bases. O, next, punta tayo sa bronze and lowry. Uh, pag bronze and lowry, Josh, ano, for, uh, ano definition natin ng acids? Bronze and lowry. Ah, uh, proton ano, proton donor. Okay, proton donor. Example ng proton donor. Uh, ano kaya? Any acid ba may ACL? <laughs> Correct. So, kapag bases naman proton acceptor sila. However, pag bronze and lowry, ang nangyayari, once your acid loses its proton, what will happen to your acid? It becomes conjugate. It will become Conjugate base, very good. And then your base um, loses, uh, uh, accepts a uh, proton or uh, hydronium ion, conjugate it will acid. become conjugate. So you have conjugate acid-base pair system dito. Okay, so with that, I'll be sharing, ano ha, say, ano tayo? Uh, asa na ito? I'll just share a new one, whiteboard. Ayan. So nakita mo na yung whiteboard ko, Josh? Apo. So, let's say we'll have this one. C, no, not that one. Not that one. Ah, not that one. Let's say ito, Josh. CH3 and H2. And then, plus water. What will be your product? Sige nga. CH3 and H2 plus uh, water. Okay, so CH dapat NH wait lang. So H2O may giging, may giging OH. De decide first, sino yung magiging base and acid? Which one is your base? Base CH3 and H2. Amin. Very good. So, kasi ito ay isang amine, eh. Methyl amine to be specific. Tapos si water ang acid. So, water will become what again? Nasabi mo na, tama. Uh, acid. Ah, uh, uh, water will become acid, yes. Uh, pero after losing proton, so may kasi siya proton donor mo, di ba? May in conjugate base, which is OH. Okay, OH what? OH minus. And then, what will happen to your uh, base? CH3. Base, may nga CH3 and H3. Okay. Tapos, may charge ba siya? Uh, yes. Plus. Nasaan ang charge? Nasa H po. Hindi. I mean, nasa ang atom? Nasa N, N? N. Dapat nasa N yan, ha? Kasi if you will recall, di ba yung ammonium? Kasi derivative lang dito ng ammonium ion, eh. So, yung hydrogen mo, ayan. Ganyan. Then, ito yung metal mo, no? So, yung uh, positive charge is sitting atop your nitrogen atom. Okay? So, this is your conjugate uh, base. Tapos, ito yung conjugate acid mo. So, ito yung base pair mo, no? Ayan. Okay? O, ayan, magbibigay ulit ako ng another example. Tapos, ikaw this time lang yung um, mag-identify nung mangyayari, no? So, isa pa ko, let's say, si, ah, uh, eto. H2PO for negative. And let's say, we have here an H3. Ah, uh, Josh, please predict the products. Products. H, A, A, A. By sulfate, ah, uh, we know? Ito. H2PO4 yan. Dihydrogen, dihydrogen, 
phosphate. Ba't ko sinabi mm -hmm. po sulfate? Is there, any, is there any other way to say dihydrogen? Uh, no. Dihydrogen phosphate talaga siya. No! When, when, when Kasi bi-phosphate bi is HPO4 negative. When kami super fond of ano po, of yung mga may tawag po yung mga water ammonia. Don't have a word for bi dihydrogen. Mm, and H4 plus and bisulfate. Ay, bisulfate. Okay. Good. And H4 plus and then bisulfate. So, anong formula ng bisulfate? HPO4. HPO4? Uh, HPO4. HPO4. Wait a minute. I need, I need a charge. Two minus. Okay, 2 minus. If you will notice, yung mga, uh, yung mga sides ng equation mo, if charge sila, balance pa rin yan. Tignan mo sa umpisa, yung sa example, this is net zero charge, no? Tapos, ang net din ng kabila, zero din. However, dito sa second example natin, Josh, negative 1 yung net. Suppose to be, dapat yung sa kabila mo, negative 1 din. Negative 2 plus 1, negative 1. Okay? Oh, may tanong ako, sino yung conjugate acid uh, base pair system mo? Talagyan na lang natin ng parang uh, connector. Conjugate acid base pair lang ang hinahanap ko. Uh, yung NH3 and NH4 and okay, good. dihydrogen phosphate and biphosphate. Okay, yan. So, yan. so, babalik na ako dun sa aking uh, share. So, we're good with that one. Balik ako dun sa aking slide. Then, ayan. So, so, we're clear with bronze and lowry, no? So, please take note. Meron pa akong mga additional notes for bronze and lowry. Um, please uh, take note that the strongest acids, the strongest bronze and lowry acid will produce the weakest conjugate base and strongest on uh, bronze and lowry base will produce the weakest conjugate acid. So that's the reason why in this case, uh, si perchloric is a very strong acid. So therefore, perchloric will become one of the weakest bases in uh, that we know no? sa example niyan. Okay. So before we proceed with Lewis, uh, the Lewis definition, si Lewis definition kasi hindi siya ganun ka useful pa sa puntong ito, no? Pero daanan na lang natin siya. Sige, unahin na natin to. So, when you say Lewis definition, kung, kung ang bronze and lowry definition, Joshua, PDA to ha, just remember the acronym PDA. Pag Lewis naman, EPA ayan. EPA. Okay? Electron pair acceptor acid. Okay ha? Pag, ano, ha? <laughs> pag bronze and lowry, PDA. Pag, pag bronze and lowry PDA, proton donor acid. So, automatic proton acceptor na yung base. Pag Lewis naman, Lewis definition, electron pair acceptor acid. Opo, okay, yung acceptor may giging, may giging donor po sa bronze. <laughs> ah, yeah, correct. Uh -oh. Very good. Baliktaran yan sila eh, ni, ni bronze and lowry tsaka ni Lewis. Kasi ang tinitignan ni Lewis, instead na, di ba si bronze and lowry, anong movement yung tinitignan niya? Movement ni, no? Ni proton. Okay, ni H+, plus, no? H+, plus movement ito. Pero, si Lewis naman, ang tinitignan niyang movement ay electron pair. Okay? So, ngayon kasi, Josh, si Lewis, siya yung nag-open sa mga transition metals to be included in acids. Kasi yun yung nakalimutan ni Arrhenius. So, di ba si Arrhenius, Parang na, nawala sa Arrhenius definition si ammonia at yung amines no? and other bases. Ngayon, si Arrhenius naman, nakalimutan niya rin yung mga transition metals. And yung ibang ano, no? uh, element na nag act as acid. So, kung maalala mo ito, basic, uh, basic na reaction, sige nga, hindi ko alam kung matatandaan mo ito. What is the product for this one, Josh? Oh, no. BF3 uh, plus F minus. I, I, I remember this. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do annotation. BF4 minus? Parang magana po siya, diba? May BF4 minus. Oh, sige, pakita mo kung BF4 minus. I have no idea po. Hmm. Wild guess lang po. This is nice. Hmm? Sige, go ahead. Pakita mo yung ano, yung sarangan. Ako lang. Oh! 
Oh, hindi. Pakita mo. Na na-discuss na natin yan. Oh. Isunod mo dito. Ayan. Oh, lalagyan kita ng space dito. Para lang makita natin. Oh, sino yung acid muna, sino yung base. Kasi ito, ang Lewis din ay so, gamit din sa organic. Acid, HF po is acid, so this must be base. Wala po yung, ano, wala po yung stylus eh. So Lewis base yan. Okay, tama. That's your Lewis base. Ito yung Lewis acid mo. So ibig sabihin, ah, ako yung mag-ano, oh, Lewis acid. So ibig sabihin nyo, kay nino manggagaling yung electron pair? Hoy, kailangan mo itong matutunan dahil sa organic, ito rin yung aaralin natin. Electron kay nino manggagaling yung electron ni, pair? Ni, eh, ni, ano, ni, ni F. Ni, flor, ni fluoride. So ngayon, okay. pair to ha. Tapos, ito yung tinatawag nating arrow pushing. Josh ha, nagkakaroon ka ngayon ng mga arrows to denote the movement of your electrons. Kay nino pupunta yung dalawang electrons mo? Kaya nino pupunta yung dalawang electrons mo? Sa ang atom? Sa B, boron. Okay, kay boron. So, pupunta ngayon yan. Tapos, yung arrow mo dapat nakaturo kay boron, ha? So, yung start nito, yung parang terminal mo, papunta dun sa, yung head ng arrow, papunta kay boron. Indicating that the movement of your electrons is from fluoride going to your boron atom in BF3. Tapos, magiging ganito siya. Ayan. So, ano ang BF4? That's correct. BF4 ito. Tapos, ano ang charge ng BF4? Negative. Okay, good. Kasi negative yung overall charge ng reactant side mo. So, dapat yung product side mo, negative din. Okay? So, BF4 negative. Anong tawag natin dito? Naalala mo yan? Hoy, ilang beses na natin ito nadaan. Na dapat, uh, ha? Wait, it's a, com it's a, a complex din naman. It's a complex, pero... No way, it's a complex. We call this one a Lewis mm. acid base <coughs> adapt. So, yan. Adduct yan. Okay? So, naalala mo yung adduct <laughs> kasi addition sila ng dalawang compounds then product side siya. So, it's an adduct. Lewis acid base adduct. Okay? So, pero sa mga transition metals, complex yung nabubuo natin. So, pag transition metals, sino yung um, acids mo dun, Josh? Kunwari, complex formation. Complex formation, Josh. Sino ang acid? Uh, acid si BF, BF3. Tapos sa Hindi, complex formation na tayo. Complex so, formation. Ah, no, no. Acid, ligand ba? Or no? Ah, oh, sino ang acid? Ligand or yung metal? Wait, so yung ligand will give. So, acid yung metal? Okay, acid yung mga transition metals. Yun yung na-include ngayon sa Arrhenius acid, uh, sa Lewis acids, no? So, acid din kasi yung mga transition metals. And then, uh, yung uh, bases mo, yung mga ligands. Yung mga bases, usual yun, yun yung mga uh, electron pair donors. Anong masasabi mo dun sa mga ligands mo, Josh? Kasi electron pair donors sila. Anong type sila ng ele uh, electron poor or electron rich? Ayan na. Nag-aano na ako ng electron pair or electron poor or electron rich. Hmm. Ano? Electron poor or electron rich? Electron rich yung ano, ligand. Tapos electron ligand. So, ibig sabihin, ang mga bases in a general sense, yung Lewis bases ay what? Electron rich or electron poor? Yung ano po? Yung mga ligand? Lewis bases, Lewis bases. Lewis in general. Electron... Kasi ang ligands mo ay bases eh. Okay. So, electron rich sila ngayon. How could, Ako, a, how could, mo ta, ha? How could a possible, how could a, how could a Lewis base possibly have, uh, how could it possibly be electron poor but somehow give? <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yun yung concept, right? So, how come the bases will be electron poor because there will be electron pair donor. So definitely, they're electron rich. If they're electron rich, Josh, in connection as organic, what do they like? 
ano gusto nila? Anong species ang charge species ang gusto nila? Positive or negative species? They will be attracted to what? Ligands mo, Lewis bases, they are electron rich. They will be attracted to what? Electron poor, electron poor or positive species. Okay? So kaya ang tawag natin sa mga bases, Lewis bases din sa organic ay nucleophile. So, introduce ko na. So, introduce ko pala na nucleophile. So, of course, philia means love. No? Nucleo means positive. So, positively species loving itong mga to. Kasi nga, electron rich sila. They're usually negative no? or neutral in a sense, but they're electron rich. They will be attracted to um, electrophiles or dun sa mga positive species. Uh, nucleophile ang tawag natin sa kanila. Okay, so yeah, we're good with the Lewis uh, acid base definition. We'll go back sa Lewis acid base definition once we go back dun sa transition metals, no? lalo na yung sa titration nila, uh, at saka chemical equilibrium nun. And pag pumunta tayo sa organic, mamimit mo ulit yan. Okay, so para na, ibig sabihin dapat dadaanan na lang natin itong mga definition na to, ha sa organic, Josh. Dapat alam na alam mo na siya. Okay, let's proceed. So, of course, uh, the number of uh, H+, plus, the number of H+, plus, acidic H+, plus or basic OH, uh, depends on the compound itself, di ba? Kapag isang hydrogen lang yung pwedeng matanggal or ma-ionize dun sa compound, anong tawag natin dun, Josh? Anong type ng acid? It's a, kunwari, HCl. Um, monoprotic, I may know. Okay, good. Tama, I tama. Monoprotic yun. Monoprotic, kasi isa lang eh. So, example nito, HCl. Ano pa, example, aside from HCl? Um, HNO3. Okay, ano pa? Weak acid naman. CH3COOH. Okay, good. So, those are some examples of your monoprotic acid. If you have... Two or more, or more than one, ionizable H atom per molecule, that will be a polyprotic acid. So, pag dalawa, anong type ng acid yun? Pag dalawa, anong type ng acid? Diprotic. Diprotic, correct. Kapag uh, tatlo? Tripotic. Usually, okay. Hanggang dyan lang naman usually, eh, no? So, pero meron pa rin mga ano, ha? Tetraprotic o kaya polyprotic acids pa. No? So, pero very few meron na lang po, yun. So, meron, meron pa po. Hmm. Yung yes. terse, yung ano, organison. 118. <laughs> so, what do you think if you can form acid out from organison, what uh, polyprotic acid can it form? Uh, one, 118 something, what do you call that? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, ngayon, we'll go back sa mga K values nila. But so far, by naming muna tayo or by familiarity, we have monoprotic acids, meaning they have uh, H+, plus, no? 1H+, plus, ionizable H. Diprotic acid, they have 2 ionizable H. And then, triprotic, 3 uh, ionizable H. Okay? So, <clears throat> yeah, we're good with this one. Uh, Ampiprotic substances, di ba? Sino nga ulit yung ampiprotic, sub ampiprotic substances? Sila ay mga, they can act as what? They can act as uh, any, acid or base. Okay, good, no? So, kung bronze and lowly yung sinusundan natin, they can act as a proton donor or a proton acceptor as pen. Wait lang yan siya, very fast. <laughs> Okay, so if you will notice here, Josh, what can you say about your ampiprotic substances? Tignan mo yung mga nandito sa examples. Mm. What can you see? Ampiprot okay. Ampiprotic. Oh, ampiprotic substances sila. Pero what can you say about their ano, their structures or their formula? Uh, lahat sila may negative usually or neutral. Either negative or neutral, pwede, correct? Or... Meron pa. Or neutral or... Meron pa. 
Tignan mo lang yung, ano mo yung structure and formula. Hydrogen. Correct. May hydrogen sila. Not, 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 not part of it. Not part of, not, not part of yung ano po. Mm-hmm. Not part of yung hydrogen, not part of yung structure mismo. Yes. Yung hydrogen mo mismo, pwede siyang mawala or madagdagan. No? Yun yung mga amphiprotic substances. Amphiprotic substances will have hydrogen na pwedeng they can lose it or they can be ionized. Yun yung term natin na when you say ionization, Josh, it means you're losing your proton. Let's say HCl. So when you say HCl is getting ionized, you form ions. So magiging H plus and Cl minus siya. This is ionization. Okay? So in, in aqueous equilibrium ito ha, baka kasi isipin mo, di ba ionization, sir? You form ions, tapos tinatanggal natin yung mga electrons, etc. Yes, that's true naman. It's still ionization pa rin. Pero... Um, pag sa aqueous equilibrium, you're removing only proton yan, ionized. No? Um, or you're, you're forming ions in a general sense. Okay? So please take note, let's say we'll, we'll have um, bicarbonate. So para lang ma-ano natin. O, ikaw ngayon mag-share, Josh. Share your whiteboard. Bicarbonate. Bicarbonate structure lang po. <laughs> Hindi. Hindi structure siya. Yung pakita mo sa akin na si bicarbonate ay kaya mag-act as acid or base. Depende dun sa kasama niya. Sige nga. Go ahead. Okay. So, wait. Carbonate. By... Carbonate lang po? Bicarbonate. Bicarbonate. Ah, wait. Ano ba yung structure ng bicarbonate? Uh, wait. Formula niya ay HCO3. What? HCO3 minus 4. Okay, oh, so la. Ipakita mo sa akin that bicarbonate can act as an acid and base kasi alam mo ang pre-protect siya. Let's see po kung if I can draw it well. Ah, you don't need to to draw the structure. Ano lang, yung yung ginagawa natin, yung parang uh, equation. Ano po equation? Equation kasi ipapakita mo sa akin na ano siya, eh, acid or base siya. Eh. Okay. Ah, hindi po kailangan nakipakita yung mga electrons dito. Yeah, oo, uh, hindi, hindi, hindi. Kaya pwede mong i-type. Pero anyway, dito naman. Yeah, okay. So, that's uh, HCO3 minus. Okay, so siya mag... O, ngayon, paano mo ipapakita ang acid siya? Paano mo ipapakita ang base siya? Siyempre, dapat may mag-react sa kanya. Ah, okay, okay. So, bicarbonate. Let's see. Think. Uh, ano ba? Kasi yung ano po can form acid by... So, bicarbonate is what again? Uh, anong type siya ng substance? Acid base or neither? Amphiprotic. Amphiprotic. Very good. So, ano it can act as an acid or base. Yung, yung uh, conjugate acid na po is carbonic acid. Hmm. Um, so, paano mo bubuin carbonic acid yan? React it with a strong so, acid. That is something that has a lot of H. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Reactive with strong acid. <laughs> Dapat po nasa lab po ako para mainom ko po. Tapos hindi ka siya. No. Hindi <laughs> reacts. <clears throat> That's your bicarbonate, correct? Ay, I mean structure. Bakit maliit yung X? Mumumukha siyang coefficient. Uh... Why are you writing X there? <laughs> what are those? What are those X? Uh, ano po? Any alkali? Baka any. Balagay ko nga lang. Okay, yan. Yan. Tapos, oh, kung, kung acid si 
Uh, sino yung, ilagay mo muna kung sino yung acid, sino yung base para malina. Good. Tapos lagyan mo kung sino yung conjugate acid, kung sino yung conjugate base. Check mo yung ano, yung formula mo ng sulfate, ng conjugate base mo rather. Ilan lang yung nabawas sa kanyang proton? So, you see. Oh! O, tumay na siya pag ganyan? Pwede. May naiwan ka pang proton. So, HCO3, H2CO3. Ah, okay, may naiwan sa kanyang okay. by sulfate. Correct. Kasi naging H2CO3 yung isa yun. Ayan. Tapos, tignan mo yung overall charge nila. Magbibig. Same. Overall, so, overall charge. Okay. Kunwari, yan. Sa negative, uh, sa, sa reactant side, ano ang ano? Zero. Z, okay, good. Negative. Zero. Okay, okay good. So, balance siya, di ba? It makes sense. Ngayon, give me another reaction naman. Na this time, si bicarbonate ay acid. mag a siya as acid. Go ahead. Okay. So, this time, i-react mo siya, of course, sa isang. What is siya yung mag-act as base. Ah, I see, I see. Ay, so, so, siya yung mag-act as acid. So, lahat po ng mga bay, they have the opportunity to become diprotic. Very good. Oo. Si, or ano they sila? have the ability to turn into like their... Pwede unbite. silang amphiprotic. Yes, you, pwede silang amphiprotic. How do you call it unbite po? Yung wala siyang hydrogen. Deprotonated. Ayun, deprotonated. Deprotonated, yes. Yay. No, ano, no hydrogen at all. Correct. Deprotonated species. Okay, so ngayon, ngayon this time, yan ang acid. Okay, so paano siya matanggal? Ah, alam ko po. Correct. Mag-isip ka ng base. O, edi, a strong base. Strong base. L I O wait lang. Hmm. Go ahead. Super strong, super strong base. Na magana siya. Alam ko po. Rubidium. Ah wait no, ano pa? Ano ba yung ano? I S L I O ba yung strongest na ano? L I O H. Di chumay dog side. Di po eh. Met Wait lang. Ah, yes. Methyl. Ah, yeah. Pwede yan. It's good. Eh. At yan. Okay na base. Ah, okay na base yan. Methyl, methyl ion. It's a strong ion. base. <laughs> it's a Very strong big. base. I think it's the strongest base po. Hindi ba po? Alam ko, hindi. Hindi, hindi, hindi. Ano po yung strongest strong, base? Very strong yan. Ah. Naalala ko nga eh. May mga uh, 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 inorganic ka na strong base talaga. Ah, diethyl, di, diethyl benzene dianon. Dian. Yun daw ang strongest base. Check natin. Ay, ay, I think I remember. Ortho ba or meta? Ano no? CO3. Ortho diethyl benzene di an ayon ah, organic siya ah uh, diethyl benzene kasi yung benzene ring yun yung super base siya <laughs> it's a super base <laughs> ah super acid po meron ah may mga super acid din I think may yun na po yung sa sabi ko nga po yung fluoro 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 acetic acid fluoro antimonic acid ah antimonic okay ah yeah yeah Okay, conjugate base. Okay, point spelling. <laughs> and if you will notice, tignan mo to Joshua, I, uh, I will also annotate. Kapag ano, Sino yung, ibig sabihin si bicarbonate ay nasa gitna, no? Correct? Opo. 
Tapos, kapag nag-add ka ng hydrogen sa kanya, so, ibig sabihin, siya yung mag act as what? Proton acceptor siya. Pag nag-accept siya ng proton, ano siya? Mm-hmm. Proton yung, acceptor? Yung proton acceptor siya, it will become yung on the acid, which is H2CO3. Okay, carbonic. Carbonic acid. Tapos, kapag nag-act, pero nag-act siya as what? Kapag proton acceptor siya. Nag-act na sa CO3, magiging CO3. Ah, hindi, hindi. Nung nag-add ako ng hydrogen sa kanya, ng proton, nag-act siya as what? Acid or base? Act siya naman as an acid. Hindi, nag-act siya as what? Kapag nag-add ako ng hydrogen sa kanya. Acid. Acid siya pag nag-act ako ng acid na ng, ng hydrogen, hydrogen sa kanya. Nag-add ng hydrogen. Proton acceptor siya. Yes. Base siya, magiging acid po siya. Yes, magiging H2CO3 siya. Pero ah, si bicarbonate yeah. ay ano? Base. Base, correct. no So, if, if proton, uh, if bicarbonate accepts a proton, it acts as an, a base, no? as a base, to form uh, carbonic acid. However, if your bicarbonate donates hydrogen or proton, it will become what? Your carbonate ion. So, bicarbonate this time is acting as an acid. So, yeah. This is your acid route and this is your base route. Okay? So, yeah. Okay, let's share ulit ako ng aking screen. Let's go back. There you go. Yeah. So, we're good with this one, amphiprotic solvent. Tapos, uh, autoprotolysis or autoionization. When you say autoprotolysis or autoionization, it means your substance is reacting to itself. No? So, sino kaya yun? Anong example ng autoprotolysis or autoionizing um, uh, substance, Josh? Can you give me an example? Uh-huh. I have no idea. Hmm? So let's say ito. Sige, simulan natin kay water. Di ba si water kaya niya mag-act as acid and base? Correct? Yes, I'm Ampi protein sa water. O, oh, ayan. Ah. So, paano kapag may dalawa kang water molecule? Di ba? Kapag may dalawa kang water molecule... So, ito magdodonate ng proton dito. So, you'll form what? You will form, uh, wait, that's the, uh, that's the auto-ionization. Oo, uh, auto-ionization of water ito. This is the auto-ionization reaction of water. Auto-ionization of water. That's correct. Auto-ionization of water yan. So, you'll form what? You form um, what? OH minus NH3O. Okay, good. Ngayon, ito, ito Josh, ha? ito yung clue. Si water ba isolvent? Si water ba isolvent? Yes. Ngayon, kapag nag-auto-ionize yung solvent mo, Kung ano yung species na nabubuo niya, yun yung strongest acid and strongest base in that specific solvent. So, sino ang strongest base in water? Uh, OH. Correct. Ito ngayon yung, ito, conjugate, uh, conjugate base mo siya, no? Ito ngayon, si OH- siya ang strongest base in water. Kasi siya yung na kuha mo sa auto-ionization. At si hydronium ion, siya ang strongest acid in water. Kaya nga, di ba, kapag kumukuha tayo ng pH, ano ang tinitignan natin? Kapag sa aqueous solution? pH. What do we want? What concentration? H. P, pH. H plus. 
correct, di ba? Si HTO plus or si H plus because siya yung strongest acid mo in water, no? So, ayan. Hydronium ion is the hydrated proton form when water reacts with an acid. Hydronium ion is your strongest acid in water. Take note, ha, in water. So, let's have an, another example, no? Uh, yung ano, um, alam mo yung phenol, di ba? Tama? Opo. Anong formula ng phenol? It's benzene. But, uh, benzene na may? Benzene na may? Correct. That's benzene na may ano? But that but has OH. Correct. Benzene na may OH. Ganyan siya. Okay? So, or C6H5OH. Oh, ang ben ang ang benzene tuloy. Ang phenol, Josh, ay liquid. So, pwede siyang solvent. I'll stop sharing. Oh, ikaw mag-share ngayon ng ano mo, na whiteboard. Very important itong mga concept na ito. So, ayan. This time, oh, ipakita mo sa akin ang uh, ano ng phenol. Pwede ko naman iselect ko na Uh, para i-move ko to. Parang didelete lang yata po eh. Ay, didelete lang siya. Oh. <laughs> ano yan? Nagbagong page ka na lang or dinilit mo? Nagbagong page po ako. Okay, good. Ayan. Okay, Sige. I had to delete it. L. Tang, 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 tang. Uh, do, ano? the auto, do the auto-ionization of phenol. Sige nga, that's uh, your... So, other than water and phenol and other na may OH, are there, uh, are there any other non-OH-based auto-ionization? NH3. Wait, NH3 auto-ionization? Oh, sige, ammonia. Sige, try mo ammonia. Oh, ayan, oh, tinanong mo sa akin eh. Ayan, binigyan mo ko idea. Ammonia? <laughs> Is an auto-ionization? Yes. Oh, kaya niya mag-auto-ionization din. Ammonia. Basically, parang virtually nga eh. Yung mga solvents mo, kaya nila mag-auto-ionization. Ano, They can react with one another. So, lahat, ammonia. O, oh, binigyan mo ko ng idea. Bago muna yung phenol. NH3. So, lahat, NH3. Dalawang NH3 magre-react with one another. Okay, so, ito muna. Parang yung NH3, I have no idea. Ah, uh, so, pangit ng... <laughs> Ay, hindi ah. Magkakaroon. Uh, madali nga yung NH3 eh. Kasi alam mo na kagad yung acid na mabubuo eh. Pero ayan. Pwede naman yan. Pero ako ay prefer the, the, yung bilog. Kasi may resonance yun eh. Why do, you, why do you prefer po yung bilog? Resonance. Yan. Why do you prefer Siya mas... the native po? <laughs> Siya yung mas tamang representation ng benzene. Ah, so bawal, bawal po yung kekuli. Pwede naman yung kay Kekuli. Dapat, okay, dapat, po, dapat po ibawala na siya para... Kekuli structure nga yan eh. Yung may, ano eh. Mm. Yung may resonance. Oo. Oh, di ba Kekuli structure? Hindi yata po si Kekuli yung nag-propose. Alam ko si Kekuli yan. Kasi al, sa, siya ang nagsabi na nagre-resonate ang, ano, ang benzene ring. Patang pangan ng drawing ko ngayon. Kasi walang graphics tablet. Hmm, siya nga, kekulis structure na may bilog. Ah, siya nga rin po. Resonance, kasi nga resonance hybrid siya. Anyway, o oh, ayan, o oh, sige, go ahead. <laughs> so, yung isa, mag as acid. Yung isa, mag as base. Okay, so, I'm going to die. Ah, is that a full reaction, yes or no? It's a... Uh, auto-ionization. Yes, because it's it's a full reaction po because I drank the acid and then the base <laughs> No, Definitely. yeah, very good. Equilibrium yeah. lang din siya. Okay, It's a reversible uh, reaction. Suddenly, parang, parang ano po yun yung energy maging positron, electron, ano, electron pairs. Bigla nito, annihilate each other. They will mm -hmm. annihilate each other again. It's a reversible reaction. Very good. Cool, so... Okay, wait. Okay. Ionization. And... Tignan mo. Tapos, ang clue mo dyan, ano yung charge mo sa reactant side? Overall charge. So, dapat ano yung overall charge mo? Overall charge. Nang reactant side, pag tinotal mo, may charge ba yung phenol? Wala po. 
Pwede dapat zero din okay, ang so nasa kabilang so side. So this is really easy. Correct, diba? Ah, sabi ko sa'yo, madali lang din kahit yung ammonia. O plus okay. Kasi yung isa magdodonate ng hydrogen eh. Okay, good. Pero, no. Ano yung charge? Ano every, yung time charge? Na, every time po magkakaroon ng oxygen, lalagyan ko po ng <laughs> Every time you'll have an opportunity to write organism, you'll write organism. Anyway, what will be the charge of the two um oh, uh, phenyl species or the benzene derivatives? Anong charge no? Yan, anong charge yan? Ilagay mo sa oxygen. So kasi yung si oxygen, oxygen, oxygen well, lost, lost, like, lost H. So yes, lost H. Base. Lost H. Uh, yeah, correct. Nag-lose siya ng H. Oh wait, these are conjugates. Yep, conjugate base and conjugate acid. Pero ayan na yung magiging strongest acids and bases mo sa phenol. So, oh, may charge yan, Josh. Ah, sa ilagay mo sa tamang okay, okay. atom. So this one, tatanggalan siya ng positive. Oh yes, okay. So must be negative. Very good. So, tatanggalan siya ng positive. Okay, positive. Good. Tama na. It's not a conjugate. <laughs> it, but it, it, it's a conjugate pa for the other one. Mm, okay. No. So, neutral. Uh, this is the acid. <laughs> yeah, that's your acid. And the other one is your base. Oh, ngayon gawin mo yung ammonia. Si, may represent na represent mo pa eh. Ito po yung base. <laughs> oh, ammonia ka ngayon. Why does why, why why does this have to be done on the people? Eh, because you recommend that. Right? Why did I recommend it? Can we do it back time? No. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, hindi ba? Easy. Very hard. And H. H2. This looks this looks like a familiar familiar Minus, familiar Indian symbol po. <laughs> it was okay. not in Germany for the nineteen forties. <laughs> anyway, so that will be your auto ionization um reactions, no? So I'll be sharing again my other the presentation so that we can proceed with another one. Another concept, important concept, uh, nadadaanan lang din muna natin because we will meet this one in some other slides then ng anakin. <coughs> and, excuse po, and proteins. Actually, may kita mo ito lagi sa katawan natin. Zwitter ion. So, what are zwitter ion? Zwitter ion are substances that bear both positive and negative charge. So, I'll give you an example, Joshua. Ang proteins ay gawa saan, Josh? Ang proteins. They are made of what? Proteins. Proteins? Uh, made out huh? of something. I have no idea. I forgot. Uh, proteins so, are polymers. Proteins are made of amino acids. Very good. Amino I, acids. Okay, sorry. Tapos tignan mo ha, ano yung amino acids? Amino and then acid. Eh di ba alam mo, ang amines ay what? Acid or bases? Amines. Amines. Uh, ano ba? Uh, amines are sa... Derivative sa pamunya. So, NH2? Mm -hmm. Ano siya? Acid or base? Base. Base. Pero amino acid siya. So, ibig sabihin, your substance or your compound contains an acidic part as well. I'll give you glycine, the simplest amino acid. Pakabisaduhin mo to ha, yung mga structure nila pag nasa biochem tayo. So, tignan mo to. Yeah. So, this is glycine. Pero neutral si glycine dito. No? So, NH2COOH. Kaya ka amino acid kasi may amino group. That's your amino group. Tapos, ano yung acid group mo? Si carboxylic group. Uh, I have a question, Josh. 
paano kapag uh, deprotonated si carboxylic acid tapos protonated si uh, amino group ni glycine. So, this is your glycine. So, can you give me the protonated form of the amino group ni glycine? Just give me the formula. Plus ano po, yung plus H. N? NH3. NH3? May charge ba? Uh, yes, positive. Yes, positive. Tapos, carbon to, then may hydrogen ka dito sa taas, may hydrogen ka dito sa baba. Then give me the deprotonated form of carboxylic acid. The protonated form of carboxylic acid. <clears throat> Uh, and so COO. COO? Kulang, kulang lagi din yung mga. Okay. What can you say about the molecule? Nasa iisang molecule lang yan lahat ha. This is glycine. This is glycine. Hmm. Ano may kita? Ano masasabi mo sa ano? That they have a positive and minus. But it's not new. Okay. But it's not new. It's not. It's neutral. But it's not neutral. It's neutral. You're correct, no? It's neutral in a sense, na overall. But it has charges, both positive and negative. Ano tawag sa mga molecules na ganyan? We call them. Ganyan, sweeter ions. Good. Yan ang concept ng sweeter ions. Maraming mga sweeter ions sa hindi lang mga amino acids, but Amino acid uh, is one of the most popular examples of sweeter ions. Okay? So, ayan. Let's proceed. Yan yung concept ng sweeter ions. Sweeter ions kasi, pwede din silang, kung mapapansin mo, yung sweeter ions, may carboxylic group, tsaka amino group. Anong type sila ng substances, Josh? Acid, base, or neither, or what? May amino group sila, may carboxylic group din. What you call them? Ami, carbo, carbo, amin. Hindi, amino acids nga sila. Pero ano, ano, ano sila? Acid or base or what? Both. Both? Kung both sila, ano tawag natin doon? Jitter ion. Akasal... Jitter ion ay isang molecule na may positive and negative charge. So what do you call so, these? Anong tawag natin sa substances na kaya mag-act as acid or base? Amphiporotic. Oh my gosh. Good. So... Yung mga amino acids mo ay amphiprotic ah uh, amphiprotic ano din sa so, uh, amphiprotic substances. Okay? Or iba pa pa lang term diyan ay ampolite. Ampolite. So they are polite. Oh, wow. nag-joke pa ako. Ampolite. <laughs> ampolite. Yan. So ampolites are substances that can act as acid or base. It's another term for your amphiprotic uh, substances. Okay? Let's proceed. So, ampolites. Ampolites din yung ano ha, mga amino acids. We'll now proceed with R. So, the rest of the time, sakong sakto were 7.30, siguro we'll end around 8.35 or 8.40. Dahil may ano rin ako, uh, meeting yung So, we'll have the chemical equilibrium. No? So, chemical equilibrium, uh, we'll be talking about the rest of the time about chemical equilibrium. No? So, ang chemical equilibrium, Josh, can be easily explained by using this one. Okay, so we have here a reaction uh, diagram. Um, reaction diagram. No, so we can see here the rate and then versus the time. So reaction diagram position. So what can you say? Describe first the reactants. Ano may kita mo sa reactants, Josh? Reactants, reactants uh, nag, nag slowly becoming, slowly going down and then the products go slowly going up. Okay, correct. No? So, because they're reacting, no? so reactants are reacting with one another, <clears throat> therefore their concentration will go down. Then eventually their rate will go down as well because they're decreasing eh, yung concentration nila. However, yung products mo naman, on the other hand, the, re the product's uh, reaction rate is increasing because their concentration is increasing as well. But there will come a point na yung rate, ha, rate, I'm talking about the rate here. The rate of your formation ng product 
and the rate of formation ng reactants dahil ito ay equilibrium no, or reversible, please take note that the reaction is reversible. Nangyayari ito sa mga reversible lang. There will come a time na magiging equal na yung rate ng formation ng reactant and rate ng formation ng product. And we call that chemical equilibrium. So again ha, chemical equilibrium is the point wherein your system will have the same rates for your reactant formation and product formation. Make sure that the reaction is reversible muna. So if the reaction is irreversible, Josh, it's impossible for you to reach the equilibrium state or the chemical equilibrium state. So wala pong Kunwari yung ganito, uh, HCl reacting with water, di ba alam natin magiging H3O plus yan, tsaka Cl minus. Full ito, so full, complete reaction yan, complete dissociation, complete ionization. So therefore, this will not reach a chemical equilibrium state or it will not have any chemical equilibrium. However, ano ang... Acetic acid, strong or weak acid? Strong or weak acid? Okay. However, if you add or react acetic acid with water, since it's a weak acid, reversible ngayon siya. So, magiging CH3CO negative, correct, <coughs> and H3O plus. So, there will come a point na, una, in, na decrease na yung reactance concentration mo, no? because they're forming your acetate and hydronium ions. But eventually, your hydronium ions and your acetate ions will form back or will regain the products. So ngayon, if the rates are equal, you now have the chemical equilibrium. Chemical equilibrium is a dynamic equilibrium. Paano pag sinabing dynamic equilibrium? Ano meaning nun? Sige nga. Dynamic is dynamic. completely move. It's, it's like a changing, changing. Parang yung clock, ano po, clock reaction. Yeah, dynamic equilibrium. Ibig sabihin ng dynamic equilibrium sa chemical equilibrium, the reactions do not cease. No, They do not cease. Eh. So yung reaction do not cease. Eh. Uh, the formation of reactants, the formation of products, it's tuloy-tuloy, no? continuous. However, their rates are equal. So, the forward and backward reactions are still going on. Or reactions do not stop or do not cease once you reach the chemical equilibrium. Ang nangyayari lang, same rate ang formation ng products at ng reactants mo. Yun yung nangyayari sa chemical equilibrium. Kumalit yung mga ano po. Ito lang na siya very fast. Kumalit ako yung... Average, average, and of what what happens for when what what happens to me for when 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 I forget about I what I was drinking and then I suddenly move. Ayan, I'm back. We're natapon good. Po so, acid. Natapon po acid. <laughs> hindi, nalaglag yung mga, alam mo yung pamalit dun sa parang lead nung pencil, nung digital pen. Pinapalitan kasi ito eh. Parang uh, graphite kasi ito para conductive. Mm. So, pinapalitan siya. So, ngayon, nabuksan yung, ayan, oo. Yung pinakatakit na buksan. So, tumilapon yung mga lahat. Anyway, nakuha ko naman lahat. Let's proceed. So, basta ang punto ko lang dito is your, during chemical equilibrium, the forward reaction and backward reaction, they do not stop. Instead, continuous yan. The rates will be equal. 
Ako ha, wag mo kakalimutan yan. Equal rate sila. Ha? So, same. Yan. So, uh, the question here is that, how can we describe chemical equilibrium mathematically? Laging ganun, no? Quantitatively, how can we describe or how can we um, have a number for chemical equilibrium? So, we now introduce the chemical equilibrium constant. So, hindi ito bago sa'yo kasi na-discuss na ito ni Sir James, correct? So, the equilibrium law and the equilibrium constant, K. So, di ba alam natin, the equilibrium constant is equal to, anong general formula mo dito for equilibrium constant? KEQ. KEQ is equal to what? KEQ is equal to yung, oh wait lang, yung, uh... concentration na, Concentration ng products. Very good. Products yan. Yeah. Over. Times the, ano, to the, to the, ano niya, to the. To its, uh, to its raised. To, to its coefficient. Okay. Raised to its and coefficient. Over yung, over yung, ano niya, yung, what, something. Uh, what do you call that? The reactants. Raised to their coefficient. Okay. Actually, kasi dapat X ang uh, reactants. Eh. Gawin natin YC products. Very good. Products raised to its coefficient, then the reactants raised to its coefficient. Okay? So, ayan. So, with that, we can now have the um, equilibrium constant. Please take note, uh, it has been found experimentally. So, ibig sabihin, experimental ang paghanap ng equilibrium constant. Joshua, experimental siya. For all processes, that the ratio of products to reactant is constant. So once you reach the equilibrium, ganito yun, Josh. Once you reach the equilibrium, the product and reactant ratio will always be constant at specific temperature. Kasi ito ay temperature dependent. Pakitandaan eh. ito ha. Temperature dependent. So, please take note that uh, the ratio between your products over reactants, once you attain chemical equilibrium, it's constant at a specific temperature. So, how do we write um, uh, equilibrium constant? So, yun muna, very important concept. No? So, ang gagawin lang natin, alam mo na to, products over reactants, tapos i -re -re sila dun sa um, stoichiometric coefficient sila. So, it means, Josh, you need to have a balance equation first. Very important. Balance equation. Ito ang uunahin mo, ha? Number one to. Number one step. Pag nagkakalculate nagkakal ka ng mga chemical equilibrium problems, ang number one step mo ay meron kang balance equation muna. So that your um, exponents will be correct. No? So please take note, there's another, there's a note here, no? So equilibrium constant expressions provide no information about whether a chemical reaction is fast enough to be useful in analytical procedure. That is the downside ng ano, no? chemical equilibrium. Ang sinasabi ng chemical equilibrium, what will be the ratio of your products and reactants at chemical equilibrium? But uh, we don't know how fast. Your, re uh, your reaction will be or how fast will your equilibrium be attained. No? So, gano ba kabilis na, kunwari, nag-mix ka ng dalawang reactants mo, gano kabilis nila ma-reach yung chemical equilibrium? Hindi, hindi yun hindi-describe ng chemical equilibrium. Anong, ano yung mag-describe ng Josh? If um, you want the, the fast, uh, how fast a reaction can be? Chemical kinetics. Very good. Chemical kinetics yan, yeah, no? So, Pero isa pa hindi kayang ibigay ni chemical equilibrium, yung mga heat involved dun sa reaction, hindi niya rin kaya yan. So, kunwari, spontaneity, hindi niya alam yan. So, sino magbibigay? Kung spontaneous or non-spontaneous ang reaction? So, mm -hmm. Yung sa G, delta G? Very good, delta G, thermodynamics, no? or thermochem. So, Kaya dugtong-dugtong yung tatlong yan. Si, si chemical kinetics, chemical equilibrium, tsaka thermochemistry. They're all interrelated. Isama mo na sa electrochem. Si electrochem kasi specialized lang siya eh, ng redox mo. No? Parang humiwalay lang yung redox reactions mo. 
and then they created this whole big ano no big branch na chemistry electrochem so pero part pa rin yan ng uh, chemical equilibrium pa rin tapos may kinetics pa rin yan then may thermodynamics ka those are all interrelated with one another the next question will be how do we write again um equilibrium constants or chemical equilibrium constants please take note Josh kasama ba ang pure liquid and solid no Pag because good. because I don't know <laughs> the reason is that they have specific or constant uh, concentration already. Ano na, yung, yung concentration nila, constant siya. Tingnan mo, ano yung concentration ni water? Naalala mo? Di ba si pure liquid? Pure, ang water ay pure liquid eh. What is the concentration of water? Ay, naku, dapat alam mo na to. I don't know. Alam mo yung value. Uy, alam mo na yung value niyan. Get the concentration of water. Concentration ng water? Mm-hmm. Mm. Kasi dapat maprove natin na con- constant ang concentrations ng solids and liquids. Eh. Kaya hindi natin sila sinasama sa equilibrium constant and expressions. Instead, nandito na sila. They are already compensated to K. Ah, Again, ha? Ano po, ano po, ano po, bakit? Kasi mm-hmm. they, they, don't, they don't change naman. So why, mm-hmm. why should they equilibrate? Correct. Exactly, no? Okay, okay, okay. So, constant yung concentration nila. So, just include their concentration in your K so that it will become uh, integrated already. So, ano ang concentration ng water? Para lang mag-prove natin. Ayan, nakalimutan na. So, ano molarity? Formula ng molarity, Josh? What is the molarity of water? So, kunwari, may 1 liter ka ng water. And then, ilang, isang litrong tubig, how many grams? Oh, no. Uh, Approximately? So, 4 grams ba? Ay, wait, wait. 1, one, 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 one kilogram, 1 kilogram. 1 kilogram or 1,000 grams. Anong molar mass ni water? Mm-hmm. Molar mass ni water. 6, mm-hmm. 15.9994, mga 16... 16 plus... Ma- Wala na si Wako. Okay. 8, 18? 18. 18 grams per mole. So, ano ang molarity niya? Approximately. Yan yun. 1,000 over 18 divided by 1. That's the molarity of water. That's the concentration of water. So, every time 1, you will drink water... 1,000 divided by 18? Over 1. Over 1? Over 1? Kasi... So, who's over 18? 55.6 Okay, 55.56 molar. Every time we will drink water, we're drinking 55.56 molar of water. A concentrated, no? <laughs> A highly concentrated substance, di ba? Uh, pag mag-jog, mag oh, ayan! Hindi, hindi mo na kailangan mag-joke, Josh. Actually, you're always drinking a very concentrated solvent. 55.56 molar ang taas niya no so si water ay very a very concentrated na uh, substance and then if if their concentrations are constant we can now integrate it in your uh, equilibrium constant kaya hindi na natin sila sinasama sa equilibrium constant expression okay so Let's uh, understand first K. No? So what does K mean? So if K is a big number, K is greater, greater than 1. No? So anong meaning nun? Sino yung, mala- uh, sino yung mataas? Yung numerator or denominator? If K is greater, 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 greater than 1. Sino malaki yung value mo? Products or reactants, Josh? Products. So it means your... Uh, anong pinifavor na reaction? Yung product formation or... Product formation. Okay. Or the forward reaction is favored. Therefore, a large quantity of products are present at equilibrium. So, malaki yung K mo. No? So, parang ganito siya. Reactants, ganito, tapos ganito. Kaya minsan makikita mo, ganito yung mismo mga arrows mo. Anong ibig sabihin yan? You're favoring the formation of products. So, 
let's go muna sa extreme, no? So, if K is a very small number, oh, ano naman meaning ng Josh? K is greater, greater, greater than 1. If K is a very small number, ano naman meaning ng Josh? You're favoring what? Mm -hmm. Favoring reactant retention? Okay, reactant retention or um, favoring the reverse reaction or formation na reactant. So if that is the case, we will expect that at equilibrium, at chemical equilibrium, we will have a large number or large quantity of your reactants. Ngayon, ang tanong, paano kapag close to one? No? So, yun yung tanong natin, eh. paano kapag close to one? So, ibig sabihin lang nun, equal quantities of reactants and products are present at equilibrium. Very, ano to, um, sa mga substances, <laughs> very seldom mo siyang makikita yung K is very close to 1. No? Onti lang yan na uh, yung, yung K nila ay equal sa 1. Usually, it's variable with the extremes. Very high K or very low K. Yan yung um, sa anak eh, ito yung mag-check na. Check and then check. Okay? So, we we'll proceed. So, ngayon, Ang K natin, Josh, ay different sa reaction quotient na tinatawag. I think na-discuss na natin ito, no? Or na-discuss nyo na siya ni Sir James. Reaction quotient ay Q. No? Q and K, they are different. Balikan natin. Sino si K ulit? K is your? Si K si equilibrium constant. And what is the formula for that? yung product equilibrium to the equilibrium concentration of the product to the over, over uh, reactant equilibrium, equilibrium. The, okay uh, coefficient ang mahalaga dito pag k josh we're concerned about the equilibrium state only ngayon di ba pag paano pag nag-start pa lang yung reaction di ba pwede mo pa rin naman kunin yung product over reactants correct di ba at any given time or at any point in your reaction. So, kunwari, hindi, hindi mo pa na-reach or na aatin yung chemical equilibrium, we can still get the ratio between products and reactants. No? So, we call them reaction quotient. So, this is different from your K because your K is only concerned or KEQ kumbaga is only concerned for the ratio of your products and reactants at equilibrium. So, ang reaction quotient hindi ano siya um, kahit hindi equilibrium pwede natin kunin no? yung ratio ng product or reactants. Si K kasi siya yung magiging standard mo para ma-predict mo kung saan pupunta yung reaction. No? So, we now compare Q and K so that we can know, no, anong nasa ang state na yung mismo solution mo or yung mismo system mo. So, Q is calculated exactly like KC or KEQ lang using the concentrations at that moment. This take note, at that moment, at that moment. Okay? So, ngayon, if this is the case, Josh, if Q is equal to K, Q is equal to K, Josh. Ano masasabi natin? It means it's at equilibrium. Okay, good. The system is at equilibrium. So, ibig sabihin, yung Q value mo ay same yung value ng K. So, ngayon, yung Q dito, i-compare natin siya ngayon dun sa KEQ. Minsan pala ha, ang KEQ, alam, uh, ganito din siya. Pag KC kasi, nakamularity yan. Yan, molarity. Okay? So, KC is in molarity. Na-discuss to ni Sir James. Kasi may mga gases ka, di ba? KP naman yun. So, usually we don't deal with KP sa anak eh. We deal with KC. Pero in a general sense, KEQ ang tinatawag natin dyan. So, Q indicates which reaction, the forward or reverse reaction, must increase or favor so that we can reach equilibrium. 
So, paano kapag ganito? If Q is less than K. So, ano meaning ng Q is less than K? So, Mas mababa yung Q sa K mo. Mas konti yung? Mas konti po yung products form. Okay. So, if you have less products, saan pupunta yung reaction? Forward or reverse? Kasi less yung products mo eh, di ba? If you have Q less than K, mas konti pa yung products mo. So, saan pupunta dapat yung reaction to reach equilibrium? The reaction must shift what? Or must favor what? Mm -hmm. Mas favor reactance. Oh, Q is less than K. Pag mas favor okay, reactance, papadamihin mo lalo yung reactance mo. So, if, so if Q is less than K, then it will mas maraming mas maraming in the end product so more pag q is less than k correct marami pa yung reactants mo pero gusto mo onti pa lang yung products so sino yung papaboran mong reaction so products correct so product formation will be favored so or mag shift papuntang right yung reaction mo no, towards the products para at least mag-equal yung Q and then K. So the reverse will happen if Q is less than uh, greater than K this time. So if Q is greater than K, mangyayari lang yung kapag sobrang dami mong product. So kapag marami ka namang products, kailangan mo siyang bawasan. So the reaction will shift dun sa reverse side. So the reverse reaction will be favored or towards your reactants. Shift to the left or towards your reactants. So, we have an example with this one. So, hindi ko pala yung ano mo. Uh, sago. May i-hide ko lang. Para ano. <laughs> so, na rin, hindi mo pa siya nakita. <laughs> Wait, where's the... You cannot see. There you go. Double. Wait lang dyan siya. Ipa-plug in lang ako ng double. Okay. Ayan. Then, yeah. Okay. Dalawa kasi yung problem eh. Oh, <clears throat> oh, this is weird. Oh, okay. yeah. Ayan. Ayan. Tayo. Ayan, may problem tayo. Binigay ngayon yung uh, reaction natin. No? So the reaction here is formation of ammonia. So nitrogen gas reacting with 3 moles of hydrogen gas to form 2 moles of ammonia. So, is this balance? Yun muna. Now, because I step one mo balance equation. Is this balance? Of course. Of course. Swerte tayo. This is a balance equation. So, happy tayo. And then, the K is given at a specific temperature. Like, like what I mentioned, KC or KEQs are temperature dependent. <clears throat> so, at 450 degrees Celsius, your KEQ value is equal to 0 0.064. Okay, so we have here a situation, no? So, may situation tayo. So, if the nitrogen gas is 4 molar, hydrogen gas is 2 times 10 to the negative 2 molar, then ammonia is 2.2 <coughs> times 10 to the negative 4 molar, which way will the equilibrium shift? No? I'll solve this one. So, uh, so for the Q, so the Q is, the Q expression is already given. 
<clears throat> or the reaction quotient expression. So it's just the same no, with your um, equilibrium constant expression. So that will be ammonia raised to 2 all over nitrogen gas times hydrogen gas raised to 3. So if that is the case, uh, ano ang ammonia mo? That's 2.2 times 10 to the negative 4 squared all over uh, nitrogen gas is 4. Make sure that your ano ha, uh, ang, ang mga reaction quotients and K should be in molarity. The concentrations should be in molarity. Then hydrogen gas is 2 times 10 to the negative 2 then Q. Okay? So, hindi mo kailangan ngayon dito, Josh, ilagay yung mga units kasi numbers ang mahalaga dito. Just make sure that they're in molar. So, 2.2 exponent to the negative 4 raised to this is raised to 2 tapos yung isa ay 4 times at 2 exponent to the negative uh, 2 again raised to this time is to 3 so ang answer ay 1.51 or 0 0.12151. This is your Q. So your Q is 0 0.00151. What is this, Josh? Q greater than or less than K. So yung K mo is 0 0.064. So this time, Q is less than K. So saan ang shift? If Q is less than K, ibig sabihin nun, Josh, konti masyado Okay. So, ang kailangan natin ay konti masyado yung product. So, kailangan natin para damihin yung product, shift to the right. No? Or, product formation. So, ikaw mag-solve nung ano, nung second one. Binigay. Oh, binago ngayon yung sitwasyon. You have two molar for your nitrogen gas and then, it's still the same for hydrogen gas. That's two times 10 to the negative two. Then your ammonia this time is 5.2 times that you're doing. Oh, Mark. Sige, so, 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 ah, sige, ako, mag, ako magsusulat para iisa lang pala. O, dikta mo. So, yung NH3 is 5.2 times that you're negative 3. Okay, yes. So, negative? And negative 1 to the mm -hmm. second. So, sabihin... So, siguro 25 times 10 to the negative 2. So, mga 2.5 mga ganun somewhere along that line. Uh, mm -hmm. Estimate lang po. Estimation lang. Yung isa naman, 2 molar times ano ba? O, oh, syempre, ibibigay mo sa akin yung sagot dyan. Uh, use your calculator. Wala po yung calculator. Eh. Nasa... <laughs> 2 times? Wala po yung calculator. Iyan ako po sa web. 2 times what? Uh, two, 2 times... 2 times 2, to, 2 times 10 to the negative 2 to the third power. So, mga 10 to the negative 6. Ah, syempre. So, this must be huge. See. It must be very large. Say over, ano po eh, over 2 times 10 to the, over 8 times 10 to the negative 6. So, Wala, na-integrate ko siya. Oh, take care. Ayun. Ano sa doon? Uh, mga, so mga 10 to the, mga malaki po yan. Must be hmm. greater, than, greater than 1,000. I'm sure. Okay. Actually, ganito siya. Ito yung value sa akin. So what can you say now about Q? Q is well, greater than? Yung kailangan naman lang po, di ba? Greater than lang or less than. Uh -huh. Q is greater than K. Very, so, asan ang shift? Very right. Very... No? What do you call that? Right word. Yung product forming yun. Right yung madami. Or yung product, sorry. Product yung madami. Tama? Opo. So, what will happen to your equilibrium? Shift to the left or shift to the right? Or the reaction rather? Shift to that? Right. If it shifts to the right, you form more products. Ah, okay. So, shift to the left. Okay. Or, 
um, para mas mabilis, reactant formation. No? Reactant formation will be favored. Yan siya. Next. Ayan. So, papasok na tayo sa equilibrium problem. Pero, ano ha, if you will notice, I'm refining your ideas dun sa equilibrium. Kasi alam ko may concept ka na nito. Kinosolidify lang natin siya. nag i stable ka na nga, which is the next topic. No? So, ngayon, ito yung mangyayari, Josh. So, a simple problem. The solubility of lead iodate. Wait lang ha. Okay. Ako mabilis dito. Ayan. Gawin natin. Gawin natin siya. Okay. <clears throat> let's now proceed. So let's have the story now of <clears throat> solubility of lead iodine. So, siguro feeling ko baka di time matatapos kasi mahaba siya. May ano pa siya. May less at your principle na no. So let's just uh, study this case no. The solubility of lead iodate. So lead iodate is what? Uh, partially soluble or soluble in water? Fully soluble. Again? Again? Fully, fully soluble. Fully soluble in water? Lead iodate ito? Ah, no, no. Iodate. Hmm. Iodate ito, hindi iodate. iodide. Iodide, iodide po soluble. Lead iodate Oy, lead iodide, soluble. Ay, yung PBI2 po? Mm -mm. Okay, hindi siya soluble din. Kasi naman ang sasama na ito. Wait lang ha. Anyway, uh, balik tayo. So, let's study the case of lead iodate. So, lead iodate is a partly soluble solid in water or partially soluble solid siya. So, if you will notice here, if we will place uh, lead iodate in water, you form lead, iod uh, lead ions and saka two iodate ions. So, ayun. Violence equation. Masaya na naman. <laughs> Masaya na naman tayo kasi violence equation. Tapos, ano yung associated ulit na equilibrium constant pag, para sa mga partially soluble? Naalala mo? Anong type ng equilibrium constant? I don't know. I forgot. Oh. Ay, ano? I forgot. Na sinasolve na natin yung dati. Yung ano pa yung precipitation. Uh -huh. Precipitation. Precipitate siya eh. So, anong type ng ano? Pag tapos partially soluble siya, di ba pag acid, acid dissociation constant, Ka. Pag base, base dissociation constant, Kb. Paano kapag mga partially soluble? KSP. Yun, very good. Ano nga ulit meaning ng KSP? Uh, okay, solubility product. Okay, good. The solubility product constant. And? Uh, using the uh, the way we write equilibrium expressions, paano mo siya isusulat? Let's say specific for lead iodate. KSP, is, KSP for lead iodate is equal to 1. Mm -hmm. 
KSP for lead iodate is equal to what? Lead PB IO3 2. Okay, IO3 raised to 2. Bakit hindi kasama yung lead iodate sa baba? Yung overreactant? Hindi naman siya mag... Hindi naman siya... Uh, hindi naman siya... Ano? Hindi naman siya fully aqueous. Hindi siya, hindi siya fully aqueous. Ganun ba yun? Hmm. Hindi po siya ayon eh. Hindi siya, hindi siya ayon. Tingnan mo yung reaction. Uh, reaction. Okay. So, PB2 plus, yes, ayon. Why do we not include kasi solid, kasi solid yun? Solid kasi siya. Ah, so, mali pala yung third choice ko. Ay, also, yes, it is ayon na siya. Hindi po siya ionized. Pero, hmm. it also meant na dapat hindi. Meron at meron. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa'yo dati na ano, kapag uh, may precipitate ka, it's impossible for us na sabihin natin, ah, it's an insoluble solid. No, ah, meron at meron na didisolve sa water. Pero, hindi natin alam kung gaano kadami. Might be very, very few. That's the reason why we'll see the precipitate uh, as is, no? Precipitating out from your solvent or out from water. So, let's say, let, let uh, you think, no? So, lead iodate is partially soluble in water. And if you will notice, its KSP is very small. 2.5 times 10 to the negative 13. So, we can say that uh, majority of your lead iodate will be insoluble in water. However, there will be ions pa rin, no, coming from your lead iodate present in water, such as your lead 2 plus and iodate ions. Okay. So, ngayon, ito ngayon yung scenario. At equilibrium, the solution is saturated already with PBIO32. Solid to, no? So, which means simply, no more solid can be dissolved. So, how do we determine the concentrations of PB2 plus and iodate, no? So, or what is the molar solubility? of lead iodate in this saturated solution. So parang ganito siya. No? Pag, mag, pag may lead iodate ka, Josh, and you have water, lagay ka ng super on lang na lead iodate, tapos i-mix mo siya, tapos darating yung point doon na may makikita kang solid sa ilalim. Pag may nakita ka ng solid sa ilalim, anong type na ng solution yun, Josh? Ah... Uh... Kasi naglalagay ka ng lead iodate, sobrang-sobrang konti nung una. Tapos madidissolve yan kasi konti pa lang naman eh. Pero darating yung punto na pag naglagay ka ng lead iodate mo, you'll now start seeing solid particulate sa ilan. What is that? You now form what? Precipitate mo. Oh, you know, you form a precipitate. Pero what type of solution was formed? What type of solution was formed? Uh, colloid? Oh, colloid ba yun? So, meron ka. Meron ka sa ilalim. It's an indication that you form what type of solution? Colloid. And colloid is not a solution. Ano ba? Physical, ano yun? Physical evidence yun na meron ka na anong tawag doon? Kasi di ba sa una, pag naglagay ka, nadidissolve yan. Pero darating yung punto, hindi na nadidissolve yung solid. So, anong meaning nun? You now form a what? Saturated. Okay, you now form a saturated solution. Di ba? Physical, ano nga yun? Physical evidence natin na you already form a saturated solution if solids cannot be dissolved anymore. Saturated na siya. So, ang tanong dito, gaano ka damang lead 2 plus and iodate yung na-dissolve? Or what is the molar solubility of lead iodate? As a cool, gaano ka damang yung natunaw na lead iodate? So, of course, to answer this, we will use the concept of chemical equilibrium kasi meron kang binigay na equilibrium constant. And we will use the table na KSP. So, a KSP ko lang. Ice table. So, when you say ice table, so alam mo na to, yung species ay nandito, usually, um, you separate the products and reactants. Kunwari, for this one, ito yung product, uh, reactant mo, rather, then you have two products, product one, product two, no? then, uh, write the ice table. So, ice, uh, I for initial, 
C for change, then E at equilibrium. So what you will be writing here for the different spaces will be the um what's will be their concentrations. Ang important dito ito si equilibrium concentrations. Kasi once we have the equilibrium concentrations, we now substitute that to your K expression. Eh, binigay ang K noong lead iodate. Meron kang KSP, no? So, we can now calculate X, no? So, na, with calculating na X, na ano na natin, no? Ba, kukuha natin yung um, equilibrium concentrations ng mga species mo. Okay. So, with this, uh, ayan, mag ice table tayo. So, ice, initial, change, and then, ganyan tayo, equilibrium. So, this will be at your, at equilibrium. So, may tanong ako, Josh, ano ang ilalagay ko kay lead iodate? Solid. Solid, initial, uh, wala. Bakit? Wala naman po siyang concentration. It's a solid. Okay. So, at hindi natin siya ini-include sa equilibrium constant expression. So, ekisan mo kagad yan. Ulit ha, yun yung shortcut dito. If you see solids or liquids, ekis mo na yan. Do not include. Do not include in calculations. Okay. How about sa uh, PB2+, plus? initially, meron ka ba? PB2 plus. Initially, no, run ka, Josh? Wala. Zero. How about your iodate? O, iodate yan na. Mm, zero ano din. Pa? Zero din. Pero, ano yung change mo dito? Uh, plus or minus? Plus? plus? At ilan ilan na buo? Yung molar na po ng ano, PB. IO3. Ilan siya? Magsisimbol tayo dito. Plus? X yung PB plus 2X yung iodine. Very good. So, at equilibrium, you now have X na PB and then 2X for iodine. Tapos, ano yung KSP mo? KSP expression. KSP is equal to, balik tayo, PB2 plus times iodine squared. Squared, no? So, ibig sabihin, so that will be PB is X, correct? Tapos 2X raised to raised to what, Josh? 2X raised to 2 squared. Okay. Which is equal to ito yung value 2.5 times that to the negative 30. So, pag-solve mo na to sa calculator. Ano nga yung X? I don't know. So, we can actually ka, uh, combine this two. Two x squared is equal to what? 2.5 2. over 2, which is 1.25. Two x squared is equal to 4 x squared, no? Tama ba ko? 4 x squared. Ay, 4, sorry po. So, 2. Yeah, 4 x squared. Tapos, ita times ko pa sa x. 1.25 over 2. Uh, 0. 4x cubed, correct? 5? 0.625 to the negative 13. Cube root nun. Correct. Very good. So, x is equal to the cube root of 2.5 times 10 to the negative 13 all over 4. Correct? Ano ba ako? Pwes, ano yung may yung algebra ko? Correct, no? 4. Pwes, ito. Okay, sorry. Ah, ito sagot. P y 96 times 10 to the negative 5 or 97. Hmm. 3.97 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. Ang may tanong ko, Josh, sino yung x? Sino yung x ulit? Yung how much concentration of PBIO3? Two. PBIO3 po agad ba yun? Specifically, sino yung X? Tignan mo yung mga nasa at equilibrium. PB concentration. Okay, good. So, si PB2 plus, ayun, masasagutan na natin. Si PB2 plus ay equal sa 3.97 times 10 to the negative 5 
Tapos, paano si iodine? Anong concentration niya? Ita times 2 ko lang siya, di ba? Tama? Bro, daming ko pa lang. Times 2. 7.94 times 10 to the negative 5. May tanong ako, what is the molar solubility? Sinong susundin mo, si iodine or si PB2 plus? 2 plus. PB2 plus. So, ito din yung molar solubility mo. Kasi siya lang naman yung one nila. This is your molar solubility. Yeah. That is approximately 4 times 10 to the negative 5. So, we know that your PB2 plus is 3.97 times the negative 5 or approximately 4 times the negative 5 and your iodate ions will be 7.94 times the negative 5 molar. Wala akong unit to be molar. And then, the molar concentration is 4 times the negative 5 or similar dun sa lead ion mo, which is 3.97 times the negative 5 molar. Ilan ba yung sig fig? Yung sig fig natin, ah, wala naman. No? <laughs> Walang sig fig na binigay. Kasi ang mga constants, Josh, no? wala silang sig fig. Constant yan sila eh. So, indefinite ang significant hindi sila. So, we follow na kung ano yung binigay o ano yung binigay. So, gawin kong 3 sig fig. So, eto 2 sig fig lang. Kasi yung binigay niya, ah, sinod na problem. Tayo 3 sig fig. Okay? So, this is the Next uh, topic, Le Chatelier Principle. So you know this already when you say Le Chatelier, when you say Le Chatelier Principle, kapag na stress yung equilibrium, nag a adjust yung equilibrium so that you can relieve the stress. No? So again, when a chemical system at equilibrium is disturbed by a stress, no? the system adjusts so, or shift no? so that we can oppose the change or lessen the stress. O kaya, to remove the stress and retain the equilibrium or regain back or regain equilibrium, no? So, what are the possible stresses in a certain chemical system? Kapag binago mo yung concentration, definitely, magkakaroon na change dun sa equilibrium mo. May stress yung equilibrium mo pag binabago yung concentration. So, therefore, it will adjust or will uh, react, no? In the side or in the uh, it will favor a certain side of your reaction so that it will regain equilibrium. And then, pag binago mo yung pressure or volume, it might also, uh, it, this one can also affect no, the, the equilibrium. So therefore, magkakaroon din ng shift, no, either favors the reaction, uh, the reactant formation, or the product formation. Then finally, change in temperature. So, depende din yan kung anong type ng um, reaction yung mismo system mo, no? Or yung system mo, kung pag once na rin yung chemical equilibrium, it will still follow, no? Yung thermodynamic parameters niya. So, the temperature will be adjusted uh, or can affect the equilibrium as well. So, ngayon, ang tanong ko dito, Josh, how about yung presence ng catalyst? Can presence of catalyst affect your chemical well, equilibrium? Ah, uh, hindi po. Uh, yes. I, baka either it could... Wait lang. Yes. Okay. Yung ano po, uh, mga, let's say, metal, it could speed up yung chemical equilibrium. Pero yung value ng chemical equilibrium, napapalitan nyo ba? Or yung mismo chemical equilibrium itself can be disturbed by... Iba. Uh, Catalyst. The answer is no. Ha? The presence of catalyst or addition of catalyst do not affect or does not affect chemical equilibrium. Instead, chemical equilibrium will be attained faster. Yun lang yung meaning ng, uh, yun lang yung effect ng catalyst. Di ba pinapabilis lang naman ng catalyst yung reaction? Ang mangyayari dito, pag nilagyan mo ng catalyst yung system, mas mabilis lang maa-attain ng system yung equilibrium but it will not change the direction. It will not either favor the products or it will not favor the uh, reactants, etc. Only these three. Concentration, pressure, or volume. So, pwede for yan. Minsan kasi hinihiwala yung pressure and volume. Um, concentration, pressure, volume, and then temperature. May summary tayo ngayon. So, ito na-discuss na ito ni Sir James ng equilibrium. Ano, Gen Chem mo, no? So, actually, binalikan nga natin yung ano uh, <coughs> 
binalikan na natin ito dati no so yung yung pag nagle-shuttle tayo para siyang siso kumbaga no so let's say kapag doon muna tayo Josh sa concentration so kung mare meron ka AA plus BB uh, and reversible CC plus BB okay so paano kapag nag-add ka ng A or B ano mangyayari Josh saan mag-shift ang equilibrium pag analagyan ng B mag-shift siya sa reactants So, pag nagdagdag ka ng maraming A, ano mangyayari sa season mo? Nadami yung reactants mo. Paano mo mare-regain ang equilibrium? Mm. You form what? You form more products or you form more reactants? Oh, okay, so, anong direction yun? Shift to the left or shift to the right? Shift to the left. Pag shift to the left, ibig sabihin you're forming uh, more, more reactants. So, so, more products, shift to the right. Okay. Shift to right. Okay. So ngayon, um, hindi mo babaguhin yung K mo dyan kasi nga, nire-retain lang natin yung equilibrium. No? So, the next one is paano kung product side yung dinadagdagan mo? At C or D. So, of course, the reverse will happen. No? Shift to left. Shift to left siya. Tapos, ito yung susunod. Paano kapag volume or pressure? So, usually, gas molecules ang tinitignan natin. Kasi sila ang mabilis na naapektuhan ng changes ng pressure or volume. So, ngayon, uh, pag sa gases, Josh, let's say ganito siya, few gas molecules sa reactants papunta sa more gas molecules. Ito ngayon, kunwari, yung reaction mo. Paano kapag in-increase mo yung pressure? Saan pupunta, Josh, ang equilibrium? Pressure increase. So, pag increase mo ang pressure, what will happen to your volume? Bababo. Okay. Of course, boys, so yan, no? Pressure is inversely proportional to your volume. So, kapag tinaas ng pressure, lumiliit yung volume, Saan pupunta ang equilibrium? Sa mas maraming gas molecule or sa mas fewer na gas molecule? Less gas molecule. Okay, good. Siyempre, mas, mas magkakaroon ng chance mag-react yung side na mas maraming gas molecule. At nandito, nakikita natin yung product side ay maraming gas molecule. So ngayon, shift to the left or shift to the right with that given uh, condition? Shift to the left. Okay, very good. Shift to the left. Or formation ng um, formation siya ng uh, reactants. No? So syempre, the, the reverse will happen. If you decrease the pressure, you're actually increasing the volume. So if you increase the volume this time, yung few gas molecules will be reacting more so that you can form more gas molecule or shift to the right this time. Then finally, increase T, decrease T. This is the last one na factor affecting your chemical equilibrium. Uh, please take note, neither concentration nor pressure nor volume can change the value of your K. Pero ang temperature, kaya niya yan. Di ba sabi ko sa'yo, ang K ay temperature dependent. So therefore, it can change the value of your K. Kaya tingnan mo ha, regardless if heat is uh, retained or heat is being gained by the system, endothermic reaction or exothermic man yan, you will change the K value. Okay? So if we increase the temperature, increasing temperature. So, let's say, ganito naman yung um, reaction mo. So, bigay tayo ng reaction mo. So, reactants mm -hmm. plus heat going to products. So, what is this? Endo or exo? Endo or exo? Based dun sa binigay ko sa'yo na, na equation. Endo or exo yan? 
Reactant plus seed will form the products. Endo or exo, Josh? Endo. Okay. This is endo. Good. So, pag endo siya, tapos tinaasan natin yung temperature, ano yan? Shift to the left, shift to the right. So, tinaas mo yung temperature, dadami to. Shift to the... Wait lang. So... Dadami yung heat. Dadami yung heat. Sa reactant side. Shift to the right. Shift to the right. Correct, no? So, you form more products. Very good. Kasi bibigat yung side na to, no? Yung reactant. So, shift to the right ito. Or you form more products. Kasi ito ay isang endothermic. So, pag binabaan mo yung temperature, of course, shift to the left ito. So, this time, babaguhin natin, no? Dito pa rin tayo sa temperature. So, sa taas. Let's say this is your equation already. Reactants go to products plus heat. So, ano to? Endo or exo? Endo or exo, Josh? Exo. Exo yun. Kasi magkakaroon ka ng difference yan. Eh. Pag in-increase ko yung temperature, ano to? Shift to the left or shift to the right? Exo term this time. Shift to the left. So, ito yung right. Okay, shift to the left. Tingnan mo ha, magkaiba sila. Pag endo, increasing temperature, shift to the right. But if it's an exothermic reaction, if you increase the temperature, shift to the left. Okay, but dito, you form more products. Ah, you to form more reactants for an exothermic reaction if you increase the temperature. So if we decrease the temperature, this is shift to the right. Yeah. This is a good review na rin, no? With our uh, thermodynamics. <laughs> May concept pa ng thermodynamics, ng gases, etc. No? So, the Chatelier principle, equilibrium talaga siya. Babalik tayo ngayon sa story ni Let I Date, no? So, pandito tayo matatapos, Josh. So, this is the question. Diba? Let's go back kay Let I Date, no? If you reform a saturated solution of Let I Date, Ito yung nabubuo natin, Josh. So, ito yung mabubuo natin, Josh, pag ano, uh, sa lead iodate. Kapag saturated solution lang ng lead iodate, gan kadami yung lead 2 plus? What's the concentration? Mm, lahat po, X. Ah, yung X. Oh, ano yung value? Nandyan siya, sa slide natin. Ito na ba? 3.97 uh, times that are negative 5 molar. Saturated solution yan. Ngayon, ito yung, ito yung next story natin. So, ang next story natin ganito. What if we will add 0.10 molar lead nitrate sa yung saturated solution? Kung ta, we will now add 0.10 molar lead nitrate. What is lead nitrate? Soluble or insoluble in water? Soluble or insoluble in water? Lead nitrate. Insoluble. Ay, soluble. Nitrate. Soluble yan. Highly soluble nitrate. Nitrate. Ito eh. Highly soluble yan. So, may question ako. What is the concentration of lead 2 plus coming from your lead nitrate? Yeah. What is your concentration of lead 2 plus coming from your lead nitrate? 0.10. Point 10 din, no? So, wala tayong pakailang kay nitrate kasi wala, na, wala, wala, siyang, uh, wala siyang effect. So, ibig sabihin, Josh, you added what? Reactant or product? Product. Okay, nag-add ka ng product. So, by the Chatelier principle, if you added increased concentration ito, ito ano mangyayari? If you add more products, Ano dito sa specific reaction na ito? Ano mangyayari? Mag-shift to the left or shift to the right? Shift to the right. So, shift to the right. So, pag nag-shift to the right ka, you're forming more lead 2 plus and IUD. Tama ba? Tama hmm. Sige, analyze mo. Paano naging na siya talagang principle yun? Mo. Balikan mo yung equation mo. Ayan o, no? ito yung equation mo, Josh. 
You increase already led 2 plus this time. So, increase led 2 plus. Ngayon, magkano siya ulit ng... Kasi nagdagdag ka ng led nitrate eh. So, saan siya? Shift to the... Shift to the left. Okay, so shift to the left dapat to. Sobrang dami na pong led eh. Oo. So, shift to the left. Anong ba... Anong masasabi mo sa solubility? Increase or decrease? Decrease. Okay, dapat decrease solubility. Common ion effect. Oo, uh, correct. Ito ang tawag dito ay common ion effect na discussed to for sure ni Sir James. Decrease solubility. So if you now have decrease solubility, we need to prove that. Dapat bababa yung concentration ni Let2+. We now use the um, I stable again. So, I initial change and then at equilibrium. Oh, question, Josh. Kasama ba yung lead iodate sa calculations? Hindi po. Hindi po siya solid. Okay, exact. Initially, meron ka bang lead 2 plus? Wala. Meron na. Kasi nagdagdag ka. O, oh, ayun o. Oh. Yan o. Oh. Diba you added a lead nitrate here? Opo. So, ano ngayon yung initial concentration ni lead? Mm, 0.10. 0.10, good. Tapos si iodate, meron ka ba? Wala. Ah, ay zero pa rin. Tapos ang change, plus? Plus x pa rin po. Eto? Plus 2x. Yun, magbabago ngayon to. So, magiging x plus 0.10 ito, or 0.10 plus x. Ito ay 2x. Ano yung value ng KSP mo pa rin? KSP is equal to then 2 plus times iodate negative squared. squared. Okay? So, this will be equal to x plus 0 0.10 times 2x squared is equal to, ano yung value ng KSP natin? KSP is uh, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 13. 2.5 times 10 to the negative 13. So let's now calculate x. Kasi yun yung mahalag din, no? So let's calculate x this time. Uh, uh, Pa-simplify nito, Josh, magiging 0.10 plus x quadratic is 2, uh, 2x squared to, no? Or x squared, right? Right? So, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 13. Or, 4 times 0.10, that's uh, 0 0.4. Bakit pa ako na tayo cube? 0 0.4 x squared plus 4 x cube, correct? Is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the negative 13. So, this is a quadratic equation. So, Quadratic. Yeah, quadratic. Ay, quadratic. Ano siya? Cubic, cubic. Cubic, cubic pero equation. cubic pero isang x po is 0, which is impossible. Ah, uh, yes. So, 4x cubed plus 0.4x squared. Ililipat ko na siya ha. Minus 2.5 times 10 to the negative 13 equals 0. Para at least makakuha natin yung value. So, i-calculate lang natin siya. Uh, equation. Oh, I forgot what is the equation here. Inequality. Ayan, po, uh, equation. A. Yes. Ito na siya. Tapos polynomial yan, di ba? Tapos degree 3. So, ang um, AX cube ko, ang A ko ay 4. Tapos, ang um, X squared ko ay 0.4. Kaya nang calculate natin hanggang ano eh, hanggang 4. Ang um, x ko ay 0. I don't think kailangan oh. mo ng 3 kasi in the end ko may giging ano rin eh. x equals 0 is a solution. So pwede na rin siyang quadratic. Ah, oh, yeah, pwede rin naman pero uh, ah ayo ko na siya sa math. Hindi ako rin hindi ko na siya alam. So ayan. 3 3 roots yung makikita natin, pero dalawa sa roots mo ay negative. So, impossible naman yun, di ba? Negative yung concentration. Kasi concentration yung hinahanap natin eh. So, hanapin lang natin yung um, mass, uh, yung positive na x. So, dito yung positive na x ay 7.9 T1. 
times 10 to the negative 7 molar. Sino yung x ulit, Josh? Uh, yung ano po, yung lead gun sa lead iodate. Very good. Lead 2 plus from iodate. Ngayon, ikumpara natin siya from lead iodate. Kumpara natin siya dun sa lead natin kanina. So sa lead natin kanina, it's 4 times 10 to the negative 5 or 3.97 times the negative 5 molar. Tapos, nung nagdagdag tayo ng lead nitrate, 0.10 molar, ano nangyari yung sa lead na nang gagaling kay lead iodate? Nag-increase or nag-decrease? Nag-decrease. So, kitang-kita natin no, yung common ion effect will decrease the ions coming from your lead iodate. So, therefore, Ano mangyayari sa lead iodate? Mas pag-decrease or mag-i-increase yung solubility? I-decrease po. Decrease. So actually, ito na yung new solubility of lead iodate in the presence of lead nitrate. In the presence of lead nitrate. Okay. Yan, yeah, clear tayo siya. So, kung makikita mo, dahil lumit yung X mo, liliit din itong iodate uh, mo. Na. So, what's your new iodate this time? At 7.91 exponent to the negative 7 times 2. That's 1.58, no? 1.6 na lang. Times 10, times 10, 10 to negative 6 molar. That is your new concentration ni iodate. Imagine nyo, ha? Uh, imagine mo, Josh, from 7.9 times 10 to the negative 5 molar, the iodate ions this time uh, decrease to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. Let's check. Ayun, tama, no? 1.6 times 10 to the negative 6 molar for iodate. Tapos for your um, lead, 2 plus, that's 7.91 times 10 to the negative 7 molar coming from your lead iodate. But, but please take note, may tanong ako, Josh, at equilibrium, what is the concentration of lead 2 plus at equilibrium? Mm. No. Uh, ano ba? Seven. Ito siya. Uh, 0.10 po. Oo, <laughs> correct, no? 7.9 less than negative 7. So yeah. So, pwede na natin isabihin na 0.10 molar kasi very negligible yung nanggagaling kay lead iodate na lead 2 plus. Okay? So, yeah. That's it, no? So, uh, I think we'll end with this one. So, uh, ayan, may, may final slide pala ako dito, no? Before we proceed with water equilibria. So, next meeting, water equilibria tayo. Ayan, pwede na rin tayo, I think, mag-start sa uh, organic. Basta matapos natin yung acid-base equilibrium. Kasi ang kasunod ng acid-base ay hydrolysis and KSP. So, okay na yun. Basta tapos na natin yung acid dissociation, base dissociation, K, A, A, K, B, doon dilitaw yun. So, okay na tayo doon. No? So, I hope this one is uh, clearer to you, no? or so far you you recall already your concepts for chemical equilibrium. So, Alam ayan siya. Alam mo, kaya nga, parang ang gabi po, may pinapanood ng movie. Isang scene hmm. na tandaan ko na po sa hati. Ito po, <laughs> isang ano lang, isang pagkaka na, na is na, when I, when I remember one thing, Maalala ko po po yung... Yeah, uh, success. Ah, uh, yeah, success. Pero it takes, a, it will take like five minutes po to... Uh, <laughs> pero, it ma ma isip ko na po lahat. Eventually. eventually. Anyway, anyway, so, let's just uh, summarize what we have learned tonight. So, yung half ng time natin, no? Uh, chemical equilibrium, it's a dynamic state wherein the rate of your forward reaction is equal to the rate of your backward reaction. During... Uh, does the reaction stops kapag chemical equilibrium? No. No. So both forward and reverse reactions will push through or will just continue. Anong nangyayari lang? Same rates lang sila. Okay? So chemical reactions do not cease at equilibrium. Instead, the amounts of your reactants and products are constant. May tanong ako, how do we describe chemical equilibrium mathematically? We need the... The... Equilibrium constant po. Very good. So, pero yung equilibrium constant is just a ratio of your products and reactants raised to their 
perspective stoichiometry coefficients, correct? We can also have ratio for that. Paano kapag hindi equilibrium? Anong tawag natin doon? Sa ratio ng product and reactants ratio their um, stoichiometry coefficient. It's not equilibrium constant eh. Ano ang tawag ulit natin doon? <clears throat> Relation of product over reactants reaction at any point. Reaction quotient. And then yung Q, no? Q and K, E, Q can be compared, no? If Q is greater than K, saan mag-shift ang reaction? Formation of products or formation of reactants? Q greater than K. Q greater than K. So, more, more ano, less, less, less product, no? Okay, kapunta dapat sa lesa. So, ibig sabihin, pupunta ka sa reactants mo. Babawasan mo yung products mo, you know. If Q is uh, less than K, if Q is less than K, ibig sabihin, sobrang onti yung products mo. So, therefore, the forward reaction will proceed, no? Or you you now lessen the reactants. Paano kapag Q is equal to K? If Q is equal to K, exactly the same. Okay, so anong tawag mo doon? Uh, nasa at equilibrium. Oh, very good, nasa equilibrium. Siya. Tapos eh, we already learned the Chatelier principle, no? So, ang Le Chatelier principle is a, is a, a scenario wherein you added a stress to your equilibrium. The equilibrium will adjust itself so that it can relieve the stress. So, what are your stressors? Sino yung apat ng stressors mo? Apat yan. Sino sino yun? Mm -hmm. Ano yung apat na stressors mo? Pressure, temperature. Pressure, temperature. Hmm. Ano <laughs> Yung boils law. Pressure, okay. okay pressure, wait. pressure, concentration. I pressure. Pressure, temperature. Concentration is... Yeah, concentration, tama. Sa so, reactants or products. Whatever will affect what yung, ano, nung, yung concentration. Mm -hmm. It will it will affect the shot yung for principle. Mm -hmm. and, ano pa? Ano pa? Oil slow. Oil slow, pressure, volume. Volume, oh my God. Yon, volume, correct. So, pressure, volume, concentration, temperature. Sabi ko po yung oil slow kanina. And then, sa, apat, sa apat na stressors mo, sino yung nakakapagpabago ng mga value ni Kate? Among your four stressors, which one can change the value of your K? Concentration. Oh, concentration ba? If we add more product or if we add more reactants, can we change the value of your K? Ah, no, no, no. At specific temperature? Kailangan yung, yung ano, uh, temperature makaka-change. Good, temperature. Because if we increase or decrease the temperature, your K value will change as well. Because K is temperature dependent. Ngayon, yung, yung kinumpit natin kanina, Josh, no? yung concentration as stressor, may tawag pa pala talaga doon. Kung sa national year principle, ang tawag doon ay mass action effect. So, if we're talking about, let's say, if we add a product or if we add reactant or if we add diverse ion, common ion, may tawag dyan, Josh. Ang tawag ay mass action effect. Sir, itong mass action effect ba ay siya talagang principle? Yes. Subcategory siya. Kasi nakafocus lang ito sa concentration. So, sa anak yun kasi mahalaga sa atin yung concentration. Because this can affect your system. Okay? So, ngayon, the mass action effect tells us, yung, yung typical na siya talagang principle, there will be shift in the position of an equilibrium caused by adding one of the reactants or products to a system. Okay? So ngayon, depende yan kung nag-add ka ba ng reactant or nag-add ka ng uh, product. Okay? So next meeting, we'll now deal with the different types of K. Actually, naaral na natin ito no? or naaral yun na ni Sir James. Pero sabi ni Sir James, hindi niya tinuro yung discussion lalo na sa K and KB. Kasi nga, Dadaanan kasi ito sa anak kayo, no? So, sinabi ko din, okay na yun, ipasa natin yun sa anak kayo. So, we'll start with KW, followed by KA and KB. May hydrolysis ka pa, which is still involved in KA and KB. We'll uh, discuss KSP and then KB as well. So, si KB, ah, not, not KB, not KB, not yet. 
uh, formation constant. Okay? So, formation constant for complexes. Uh, which is, actually, na-discuss na natin ito no, sa complexes. Inaral na natin siya. Siguro mga isang problem lang ang ibibigay ko dyan para lang ma-review siya. K-redox ay naaral din natin sa electrochem. So, siguro mas dadaanan natin siya pag nasa redox reaction sa tayo for a chemical analysis. So, ang mahalaga dito, Josh, yung tatlo. KW, KSP, KAN, KB, acid base. Si KD, maaaral mo siya sa chrome or separation technique. No? Why? Yeah. Separation why, technique. Why, why in chromatography? Why? Uh, separation technique. Actually, mali, mali yung term ko. Pero may KD rin naman doon. Sa separation technique, yung physical. Alam mo yung, di ba may separator channel ka? Okay. Tama? Yung, yung paglipat nung, nung nakadisolve, let's say sa aqueous mo versus sa organic mo, may partition kasi sila. Okay? So that is another equilibrium. Ayan, no? Kunwari, iodine na nakadisolve sa organic versus sa iodine na nakadisolve sa tubig. So as time passes by, we're slowly extracting iodine from aqueous. So, so ano yan? Sa several rounds yan na separation. Okay? So, with that, we're done for tonight. Ayan. So, I'll see you on Tuesday, ha? We'll just continue for the short day and day. Okay? Hindi ko maalala. Hindi ko po maalala. <laughs> yung ano? Yung? Mga iba pong concept. <laughs> Sige, i-discuss naman natin siya. Okay? Sige. See you. And enjoy the rest of the night. Bye-bye po. Sige, sige. Exhaustion. Wait lang, natawa ako na sa exhaustion. Sige na, good night na. <laughs>